Hello and welcome to uh, Kooky Corner of YouTube. Um, I don't know what to call you. Should I call you the Kooksters? <laughs> Maybe not. Um, well, welcome, whoever you are, and uh, welcome to uh, my channel. I have been meaning to do this little task for a few years <laughs> and now I've eventually got around to it. So I thought you might like to join in. I'm just taking a seat. Um, so what I'm making or will be making is this sunshiny solstice decoration. This one here. Um, it's really quite a simple make and so I thought you'd like to see too. Um, so that's going to be the aim. So let's crack on and get on with it. So there are a few things that you're going to need, but they're not really hard. Well, some of them may be more than others. It depends on how you want to do this. How do you want to do this? Well, the way I did this was I got some uh, sheets of uh, tooling foil from Amazon. There are three sheets in a pack and I think it's about four pounds or something. The other way that you could do this, which may be cheaper and you may already have, is you know the tins, the tart tins, the foil ones? You could use the middle of one of the big ones of those. That would work equally as well. Um, aluminium foil, if you've got a thick one, may work with this, but I think it's gonna be too bendy. I think you're good with like the, the tins that tarts go in, you know, like the, the foil ones which you can get from supermarkets and places like um, Home Bargains if you're in the UK. I'm sure you guys can locate some of those or you may very well have some hanging around in your cupboards, which is all well and good. Uh, but as I say, I got this from uh, Amazon and I think Jackson's do some as well. Jackson's Art Supplies also have some of these. I will have a look and I will link in the description if you're at all interested but I'm trying to keep it you know sort of as cheap as possible so uh, yeah so foil is one thing you're going to need the other thing you're going to need is something to hang it with so a little bit of twine or whatever be string some wool whatever you fancy then the other thing we're going to need is something to etch into the foil with it's not particularly etching it's more like tooling so embossing that's the word i'm looking for um this is ideal because it's if you look at this this is a little piece of it it's really kind of bendy but it does hold its shape really well if you see this one that's the back side of it and that's the front and you can reshape it if it gets a bit bent out of shape um but yeah, so what I have been using, I'll give you some examples of things that you could use. I have got this set of tools. I have no idea why I've got these or where I got them from. <laughs> I can't even remember why I bought them. There was a reason. I cannot remember what it was. It could have been for clay, as far as I can remember. Shaping clay could have been. Uh, but I got a set of tools. Uh, those got like ball-ended tools. These have all got different sizes on them, which are quite handy. Um, the other thing that's really good is a ballpoint pen. Um, a ballpoint pen that's run out of ink is preferable because then you won't get it over your hands, but any ballpoint pen would do. Um, and if you've got a, a piece to spare, what you could do is practice the marking on that as well. So I'm going to hold on to that for a second. I'll show you what it looks like. Other things that are good are chopsticks. Um, these are a set of disposable chopsticks that I had in the drawer and I've just sharpened one end. Now you don't want it to be too sharp so that it pokes its way through the foil. So you want it to be sharp but not too sharp. So you blunt, blunt off the end a little bit, which I did with this one. Um, this is a piece of dowel, also sharpened with a pencil sharpener with a kind of a blunty end on it there. So those are two things you could use. You could use um, a pencil as long as it's not sharp. So um, I wouldn't recommend a pencil especially, but if you have nothing else, that would work. Simple, but cheap, a chip fork. <laughs> 
So when you go out and buy your chips, get yourself a couple of spare ones of these. I always find them handy for mark making. Um, <laughs> so I've usually got a couple of these <laughs> hanging around in the studio, which I do today. So uh, one of these prongs would be good for um, sort of embossing in as well. And if you wanted to, you could do a double-ended emboss if you wanted to. So that's, that's a plus point of a chip fork. Uh, what else you will need? Some black acrylic. Now, this is not necessarily, um, op no, it is optional, as I'm saying. It's something that you might not necessarily want to use, but I did, because I wanted to knock back the shine a little bit, because I wanted it to look a bit more antique -y. but you might like the super bright um, shine of the foil, so that's all up to you. But if you've got like a, a dark brown or a black, I've got a black at the moment. Um, this is a, a PBO Studio Acrylic, which is in Mars Black or number 26. Um, what else? What else? Oh, a brush, obviously, to apply your acrylic if you want to do that. And the next thing you're going to need is a pattern of a sunshine. What I suggest you do, go on Pinterest and type in sun images and find one that's not too complicated because there are some very complicated ones out there, but something that's got a little bit of, I don't know, some interest to it. So that's ideal. Something like this or something similar to this. And you want to print it out. Um, this is an A4 sheet. So it's kind of like taking up quite a bit of the top of an A4 sheet. Obviously you do the size you want to do. I mean, mine is, let's do it as a measurement against my hand. So it's kind of like as big as my hand when my fingers are outstretched. I've got quite long fingers bearing in mind, uh, but yes. So you'll need an image to trace from. You could draw your own, you know, simple drawing of a sun with whatever you want on it. If you're so inclined and you'd like to do that, you could do that fairly easily. I'm trying to think of anything I might have missed. Oh, yeah, quite important is the base that you're going to trace onto. You want something with a little bit of give to it. So this is my rubber stamping board, which is basically a thick piece of foam. So if you've got some like funky foam or something, you could layer it up and make up maybe three layers of funky foam magazines, just something that's got a little bit of give in it so that you can emboss onto your piece. Because if, if your desk is, is going to be too hard, so you need something with a bit of squish to it so that you can emboss into it. So without further ado, let's crack on and make ourselves a winter solstice returning sun. Okay, first things first, let's practice the mark making. So this is with uh, my piece of dowel and I'm just going to draw some spirals as is my want. You're just kind of practicing what the lines look like and which is the best tool for you, which feels the best, which works the best. So that's my dowel -y tool. This one is my chopstick. It's a bit sharper. So the smaller the end, the more detail you're going to be able to get in with it. And what shall we do next? Let's do the ballpoint pen. This is quite good. You're all used to holding ballpoint pens, so it's kind of an easy one to do. Same with these. I mean, they're kind of like holding a pen or a pencil. And you can get quite very fine details with this really easily. I'm going to flip it over in a minute and show you what it looks like. Ballpoint pen. Um, these tooling things are quite handy if you want to get like circle details in. So you can just kind of push them into the foil, which is quite handy. And the chip fork, the handy little simple chip fork will also give you details. Quite nicely. You can also do double ones like this. Woohoo! <laughs> so those are the tools. And that is kind of what you're looking for on the other side. You've got nice embossed image raised up on the other side of your foil. Okay, so now we're going to get our piece of foil and our pattern together and we will have a crack on at doing our sun. 
Okay, so here's my piece of foil. It's probably reflecting way into the camera. Um, it is smaller than a piece. If you get the piece that I've got, it's smaller than a piece of A4. So what I've done is I've kind of folded over the edges of this so it fits over the top and then fits. Because you don't want it to be slipping. And the other thing I've got are some of these little tiny clips. Now these will mark the foil, but if you do it in places where it's not going to matter, then we're all good. So I'm going to get about three of those out, I think. I think three is a good number to do it with. So you could do paper clips as well. So that's one there. I don't know if it's going to hinder my drawing. That shouldn't do actually. And one over this side. When I did it the first time round, I didn't bother with the clips, but then I thought it might be handy just to have some in and hold it down. But that looks like it's going to get in my way, which is kind of a worry. Uh, yeah, maybe I could just pin one in this top corner and that will suffice, I think. Yeah, just one there. The paper clips would work as well. Just need to keep it in place. I'm going to pin one down here at the bottom as well. It's not going to get in the way. That's there. Okay, so now we have secured our pattern on the top. Remember, this is going to be the back side. So if you've got anything with writing on it, remember you've got to reverse it. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, what am I going to use this time? Last time I used my dowelly sticks. I actually might use a ballpoint pen this time. So first things first, what we want to get in is the central circle. And you just do it slowly. And just pushing, don't push too hard when you're doing any embossing because it could go through the foil depending on how thick it is. And just very slowly and carefully embossing me sunshine. You'll be able to feel when you've got that because you'll have a groove underneath. You'll be able to feel exactly where it is and you can strengthen it if you want to. But you can do that when you've traced it all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to outline all of these. This I'm going to speed up for you so you don't have to sit and watch me outlining. Uh, but yeah, making sure that I've outlined all of the little spokes of his um, fiery flames on the outside there. And then I'm going to leave the detail because I can add that in later. I'm just going to get the outlines in. So the outlines of the face, the outlines of the flames. And away we go.
Okay, so we've got our shape all traced out. Uh, we haven't got any details on it yet, but that's what we're going to get to in a minute. If you flip it over, you'll be able to see the lovely embossed side on the front of your piece, which is nice, but we're going to work on this now. Uh, what I want to do first of all is to just trim off this extra bit of foil. Now with a pair of scissors, any scissors will work. In fact, this will sharpen your scissors. If you, if you know my little tips, if anim, aluminium foil, if you snip a bit up with your scissors, then it will sharpen it, which is a handy thing to know. <laughs> okay, so we've got our sun and what we want to do is I'll get the pattern back that I've got here and what I want to do is to kind of add in the little liney details. Let me take you up a little further. There we go. So it's got lots of little details in here that add into it. Um, first of all, I'm going to use one of these tools to, to do his cheeks. See how that works. I didn't try this last time, so couldn't find me tools. And I'm just going to emboss out those cheeks and then have a look on the other side, see how it looks. I worked with the other one. I didn't work with this tool last time, so it is possible to do it without. You don't need these at all. I'm just being extra and trying something else. Oh, that's quite good. It did push them out a bit. So if you have got some of these, all well and good. If you haven't, you don't need them. It just makes it a little bit easier to get those details in. I've got another one here that I'm going to try for the eyeballs. So let's, let's try and do that. Remember, don't push too hard, especially with a, a sharp-ended tool, because that will just cause you problems. Okay, so that worked quite well. I'm just going to see if I can push in that there, just to give it a bit of detail in the eyes there, with my ballpoint pen. Okay, that worked. So, back to ballpoint penage now. Let's just push it out a little bit further. The more you emboss it, the more it pushes it out. Okay, so we've got like a, a brow and eyebrows line here. And I'll put in some little eyelashes just on the end, just for the heck. Um, four, yeah, four will do it. It's working quite nicely. Okay, so we want to get the features pushed out a bit, so I'm going to use this guy, which is my big, just to push out the nose and the brow. And so work carefully and don't push too hard, otherwise you'll find you go through the foil, which is not something that you want, especially. You can see how that's looking. Okay, that's looking quite good. I'm liking that. So they've got little lines that go around here, like decorating lines. Let me try with my ballpoint pen on this one because it can get finer and more detail. And just like little illustration lines, should I say. Pushing that out, making sure we've got a nice circle going on as well. So you may have been a bit timid with it, so you just have to go through and push out the bits you want to emphasise. Okay, so I'm going to go through here now. I'm going to speed run you through and I'm just going to add in all the little bits that I want to add in of detail onto my piece. So let me tilt you back up that way a bit and we'll crack on.
Okay, so the next part of this is the antiquing. You don't need to do this if you quite like the colour of the foil that you've got, but I just want to add in some detail. I'm just going to kind of push the insides of these bits in further from the front with my finger. Kind of make them a bit more pronounced. You can fiddle around with this for as long as you like. <laughs> really is quite a quick craft though, I have to say. When I made the first one, um, I was quite impressed with how quickly it came together. So, and, and if you have children, it's something you could do with them as well. Because it's quite simple. It's not sharp on the edges. It's not like cutty sharp like some of the metals can be. It's probably a little bit more sharp when you've cut through it to make your shape but even then it's bendy so it's not gonna hurt at all right so let's get on with this bit then so i just need a little bit of black acrylic i'm just going to pop it anywhere on my piece because let's snap it down you need very little and at this point you're going to need your brush just to spread it around this is the ugly stage do not worry I put a protective mat underneath my surface because I don't know if you noticed but I've cleaned my desk yes yes I did it's going to be a whole new world <laughs> for 2023 I decided to invest in um, some drawers um, I've got one of those IKEA desk jobbies with the legs on it um, but tomorrow I'm I'm on a, I'm on a trip to IKEA to get myself some Alex draw sets. I'm going to get two, one for either end, because all the the stuff that ends up on my desk will sit very nicely in the Alex drawers. So that's what I'm going to do. Right, so I have covered all of my piece here with black acrylic. You could use, as I say, a brown um, burnt umber or something. Anything that you've got to hand that's going to be like darker than your uh, metal because that's going to add the antiquing part of this in. And what we want to do is to kind of let this dry a little bit and then we're going to buff it up and make it look pretty. <laughs> Just making sure I've got everything covered. Yeah, so don't panic. I'm doing this on the front end by the way just so you know not on the back <laughs> only on one side okay so we're going to let this dry for a bit and then i'll be back and show you what we need to do next okay so we're back and i've got my napkin that i'm going to make into kind of a smoothish surface I kind of a feeling that cotton wool might work well with this or a cotton wool pad but as I don't have one with me, and I do have this rather fetching pink napkin, it's gonna go in with this. So I'm gonna just kind of just rub it over the surface. And you're kind of just buffing off the acrylic. And the bits that are sunken in will hold on to the acrylic more. Let me turn that over so I get it all over my hands, as I usually do. So just wiping off a whole lot of that acrylic, but some of it will stay, and that's what gives it the the antique look. And as I say, not all of you will want that. So if you kind of just prefer it the way it was before I add the acrylic, then leave it like that. Oh. I think it adds a little bit of dimension. I'm just going to turn this around. Now, with my finger, I'm going to find places that I especially want to shine and just gently buff those a little bit more. I just think this is such a fun thing to do. <laughs> It's made me happy on this well, a rather nice sunny wintry morning and um, I'm doing this currently 
on the 20th and tomorrow is the winter solstice so it's kind of fitting in a way there and so you can keep going buffing up the little bits that you want spend a bit more time on it let me get rid of that you simple kitchen roll before I end up with it all over my hands so and now comes the bit where we cut it out so just a pair of ordinary scissors I'm just going to take you up a little bit further so I don't knock the camera I'm going to cut around the edges because the, the best way to do this is to get rid of the excess pieces of foil by cutting around the edges obviously you don't cut into your sunshine but just getting rid of all the bits we don't want just makes it a little bit easier when you come to do this bit I'm going to take each section at a time and I'm not going to move my scissors I'm going to move the foil if you, if you see what makes sense there I'm kind of cutting it section by section so when you come to the curvy bits if you have curvy bits in yours then move the foil and not the scissors so curving round and it cuts really easily I have to say it's not a hard thing to cut and you can do it with those like um, children's scissors so if you've got younger children who want to have a go obviously not too young but younger children who can handle a pair of scissors this is really a nice thing to do and you don't have to do the sunshine you know you could do yourself a moon I might have a go at that myself some silver foil um, or you can do anything you like you could do reindeers any simple decoration you could do in this way so you don't have to stick to a sun you can do anything you like as I always say the world's your lobster go for it <laughs> cutting round So I'm going to continue to cut around mine. I will be back at the end and we'll have a look at how we can attach some kind of uh, thread to this. Okay, so there he is. We've cut them all out. Um, all he needs now is a little bit of a thread, some way to hang him, up, hang him up on on the wall or on your tree. If you want to hang him on your tree, I'm going to put him on my Yule tree so he can sit on there right at the top. And how we do this is I've got a piece of foam here I'm going to place that underneath his top ray there I've got, I've got paint all over my fingers this is an awl but you could equally use something like a, a sewing needle because it, it's like butter it literally just goes through so just make yourself a hole that's big enough but it's not going to break your um, metal I've got some twine here so I'm just going to cut myself off the length of that and hopefully it will thread through easily you know my problems with threading <laughs> uh, it will it will go through there so I'm just going to do myself a little knot on the top there he is ready to hang up he's nice and lightweight he's not heavy of all tin stuff is nice and light to use if you pack him carefully you can bring him out each year um, I've also thought of another use for this so if you have like a, a journal or something you'd make a really good journal cover front if you made him big enough to fit your journal you could just stick him down with hot glue Think that I might try that with something <laughs> actually thinking about it also second time around the details came out better so I got a better result so the more you do the better you get clearly <laughs> like everything isn't it there he is a little sunshine guy to hang up and remind you of the winter solstice 
hope you've enjoyed this if you have please don't forget to give me a like and one of those thumbs up um if you didn't you know um sorry <laughs> hope you did uh if you liked it and you'd like to see more of my antics that i get up to on this channel which are usually arty sometimes crafty and uh hopefully very friendly most of the time <laughs> uh, so yeah like subscribe and click the bell if you want to see whenever i do an upload to the channel have a great day i will see you very soon with some more of the same kind of craftiness or artiness or whatever in us <laughs> but i'll be back that's that's a given take care look after yourselves bye for now